Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. JavaScript objects are mutable. When you understand how this can affect your code, you can work with this feature instead of against it. In this tutorial, we are going to explore some of the things to be aware of when working with mutable objects. By default, JavaScript objects are mutable. This means the contents of that object can be modified, changed, added to. This leads to some of the unique behaviors with objects in JavaScript. It is important to remember as we go through this tutorial that JavaScript objects includes arrays and functions, even though in this tutorial the examples that we will look at will be just regular objects. The fact that objects are mutable can be very helpful, but also dangerous. Thus, the importance of understanding the behaviors that go along with this feature. Let's begin looking at some examples that will help illustrate some of the behaviors to be aware of. So first off, I'm going to create an object. Notice I'm declaring it with const. But that's not going to change anything about whether the object is mutable or not. Basically, all const does is prevents me from reassigning this variable to something else. It does not control the behavior of the object, as you will see. Now, I'm going to declare a second variable, obj1, and I'm going to set that equal to obj, this variable that we just declared up here. Then I'm going to do obj1 number, and I'm going to use the increment operator to just increment that number. Now let's save that really quick. I'm going to refresh this page and then open the console. Now let's take a look at obj. Notice the increment operator cause the number property of, of obj to be 11. Well, we assigned obj1 to obj. So what happened there? Let's look at obj1. Notice that the number property in obj1 is also 11. Now, why did that happen? Well, if we come back and look at this code, obj and obj1 grasp the same object. Here is the object here, and so both obj and obj1 now grasp that object. So when we increment this property, when we mutate the object, it is reflected in obj1 and obj. That's an important thing to be aware of when working with objects. Now let's do something else here. I'm going to create a second object, obj2, and we're going to define this with the exact same values. It's going to have a property number and it's going to be set to 10 as well, just like the one up here. All right, let me save that. And I'll jump out here and refresh. Now, let's look at this. OBJ, is it equal to OBJ1? What do we get back? We get back true. And that's because they both grasp the same object. Now, OBJ2 is defined with the exact same information as OBJ. So are they equal to each other? No, they're not, because they do not grasp the same object. They may have the same information, but they don't grasp the same object. So what this is telling us is that these two variables, when they're equal to each other, are grasping the same object. If you change the object using one, that change is going to be reflected in the other. That's an important thing to be aware of. Now, let me try to illustrate where this concept can get you in trouble in your coding if you're not aware of the nature of objects. Let's do 
another example here. I'm going to comment out this. And then I'm going to paste in some code so you don't have to watch me type it all. And press return a bit so you can see it. Okay, so here's what this code is doing. I've created first a new object up here. It has two properties, total and increment. You can see what they are set to. And then I've created this function. Now, what is the purpose of this function? Well, this function is going to return another function, but it's going to create closure over the value that is passed in, the object that is passed in. And so the function that is returned will use that object. So this may be using a few concepts which you may not be familiar with. And if so, I'll include a reference to some tutorials that talk about both of those. But basically, quickly walk through this. What's it doing? We're passing in an object, then we're passing in a value. It then sets the increment property of that object to whatever the value is. Then it returns a function. And it's done. So it doesn't do this code here. That code doesn't happen until the function that is returned is invoked. And so down here is where we create two new functions. Increment by one, and we call this function and pass in the new object and a value of one. Increment by two, call that same function, pass in a new object and a value of two. Okay, So these have a function. A function gets returned to both of these. So when we invoke them, that's when this code is executed. That's when it logs to the console what total is, and then it increments total by the increment value, and then it logs to the console total again. All right. Now, the idea here is that we're creating a function that's going to increment it by one here, and another function that's going to increment it by two here because of this value that we pass in. All right, let's go ahead and save this and see what happens. Refresh, and now let's go ahead and call increment by one. Notice what we're getting here. It starts with 65, ends up with 67, so it's actually incrementing by two. Now, why is that happening? Let's jump back. It's happening because here is the object right here. This variable grasps that object, and that's what we pass in. Well, when we pass it in, this variable now grasps that object, and it's referred to throughout this function that's returned. And it's able to refer to that because of closure. However, the increment value is changed by whatever value we pass in. Now, since this is the second line, the increment value ends up being 2, not 1. And so by the time we invoke this function, the increment value is 2. See, let's go ahead and take a look at new OBJ. See, the increment value is 2. By the time we invoke this, it's using this value here. They are both grasping the same object. And so what we try to accomplish here does not work. Now, what if we were to create a second function? I'm just going to copy this in that we call that has a different variable all the way throughout it. See, obj2 as opposed to obj1. And now, down here, we call that function instead. Let's go ahead and save that and see if that helps at all. I'm going to refresh. Now, what do you think is going to happen? Think about this. Are we going to increment by 2 or by 1? Well, we're incrementing by 2 again. The function doesn't change anything. We are still passing in the same object. And so now the object right here, this object, is grasped by this and by this. So it really doesn't change anything because it is the same object that we are passing in. 
Now something else to show, because we invoked increment by one first, notice when we do increment by two, total starts at the value that it was left at, 67. It doesn't start back at 65 because once again, it is referencing the same object. These var this variable grasps the same object that this variable does. And so when we make a change to that object right here, that change, that mutation is reflected when we work with the object again down here. So using a second function didn't help at all. And that's because the variables grasp the same object. And we have mutated the object. And so that mutation shows up wherever that object is referred to. So this is an important thing to be aware of when you're working with objects. Make sure you know what you are doing with them. Make sure you guard against this type of thing happening inadvertently. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. To continue learning, here are some suggestions. Click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, click the circle link on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. And if you're ready to dive into full courses, click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com. Thanks for watching.